Hey, welcome to this beginner-friendly and pregnancy-friendly yoga class. It's also okay if you're neither. <laughs> Just bring your hands onto the chest and stomach and feel your breath through that coming and going of the breath, both in the chest and the stomach and everywhere around there. And remember, deep breaths doesn't have to mean very strong breaths, so keep them gentle. And then release the hands onto your knees. If crossing the legs is not comfortable, you can sit differently as well, but just start moving into the neck. Could be half circles, could be just a little bit of movement and going from one side to the other. And then from here, open up your chest to the left side with that right hand maybe on your left knee. And then other sides, so just a nice gentle twist, open twist, feeling your breath. As always, hands back onto the chest and stomach, drop your left ear to the left shoulder and hold it there. And then slowly down towards the collarbone and up towards the ceiling. And the ear stays close to the shoulder. It's sort of the chin that guides its way up and down. And then bring your chin to the chest and up. Drop your right ear to the right shoulder and hold there for a little bit before you start that movement again. And slowly bring your chin towards the collarbone and raise it towards the ceiling. So it doesn't matter how high it goes, it should feel nice for you. And roll the chin to the chest and over to the left side and maybe all the way up and over to the right again. So this could be a full circle. If that doesn't feel nice, then make that circle a bit smaller change direction and if that doesn't help then maybe you just want to do half circles so they're not for everyone and my credo is always be comfortable so hands behind the head elbows towards the front and you want to try and keep your back straight and just let the head drop and add a little bit of weight and then hands come down and we change um, how we're sitting here. So if you were cross-legged, outer foot in towards you, right hand to the ground, left arm reaches up. So just up for the moment, reaching for the, for the ceiling. And then from here, we go over to the right side. We make sure the neck is comfortable. So whatever that means for where your head is, um, where the chin is, could it drop? Would it go up and be happier there? And then release slowly and change sides. First, just dropping the left hand to the ground and raising the right arm, just going for distance. And also feeling how that breath is so much stronger, strong, strongly felt in the right side now. And then take it over to the left side still stretching laterally and again the head could drop you don't have to look up you don't have to look anywhere in particular just make sure the neck is comfortable and release inhale and raise both arms reach them high and look up to the ceiling and walk your fingertips up towards the ceiling imagine a ladder and push your elbows down on an exhale drop your chin to the chest inhale raise the arms look up exhale elbows down so you're creating a bit of a w shape with your arms rather than cactus arms where the elbows are in line with the shoulders so a little bit lower and the more you do that the more you want to squeeze the shoulder blades and create a little bit more strength a little bit more warmth in your body but keep your neck completely relaxed and then hands onto the shoulders start drawing circles with your elbows taking them to the front up to the back and down Keep breathing. Just being aware of the breath is fine. No need to guide it. And we bring the hands behind us and try to hold on. And I'm very helpfully turning around to show you. Hands to the opposite elbow. And then from here, stretch out your left leg. Bring your right foot to the left inner thigh. Look up to the ceiling. Keep your spine straight. Release hands onto that left leg, doesn't have to be far. Drop the head and gently tip forwards from the hip. Don't worry too much about um, rounding the back. You can, you're allowed to round the back a little bit, just in equal measure. So you don't want to reach for the foot, for example, if you feel like the shoulders are going forwards too much. And you could also um, keep your left foot on the ground and raise that left knee up if it's too much for the hamstring. And then we change sides, stretching out the right leg, bringing the left foot to the um, right inner thigh. 
Again, holding on to the opposite elbow behind us and straightening the spine. So I'm looking to the front and then hinging forwards from the hip, releasing the hands onto that leg. Don't take them too far if that's uncomfortable. You want your shoulders to be relaxed. Most of the time during the day, especially when we have a desk job, they might not be that relaxed. So let's be kind to them in our yoga practice. <laughs> and then we bring the soles of the feet together and drop the knees to the sides. Create a bit of space here um, between your body and your feet. So send them a bit further forwards than you normally would. Drop your head around your back. And it doesn't matter how low the knees go. That's completely up to you. Slowly roll up through the spine. And then from here, make your way onto all fours or into Bharmanasan, tabletop pose. And toes tucked under, push yourself to the back and forwards with some quadruple rocks. And notice how you're using the whole body here, from the toes all the way to the fingertips. Neck relaxed. And then relax the tops of the feet onto the ground. Breathe in and arch your back. Breathe out and round your back. Inhale and arch, exhale and round, and really find your own rhythm here. I'm going quite slowly. You may want to go faster, but make sure that your breath guides your rhythm. Your breath guides your movement, not the other way around. If you're not pregnant, you could hold your breath at the top as you hold that posture and hold your breath at the bottom. And then all of us could freestyle a little bit, arching as we push the hips to the right side, looking beyond the left shoulder and to the back, and then rounding back to center and arching hips to the left. But again, that's just one option. You could also move into your shoulders, and all of that is optional. I want you to find your own little movements that may feel good for you. Could involve your, um, your wrists, Involve more of your hips as well, maybe knees further apart, so whatever you feel is right here for you. And then slowly sit back on your heels, shake off the hands, and come to sit with both feet facing the right side. And then bring that right foot either to your left shin, or if you're not pregnant, to the outside of the left leg, and then twist drop the knees on top of each other that's sometimes a little bit difficult you could straighten that bottom leg as well but knees on top of each other for that internal rotation and then we raise our right arm and drop the hand behind us we bring our left hand to the elbow and we might just drop that um, left elbow in front of us we could also grab hold at the back here but that left hand can stay at the right elbow as well if that's more comfortable and we can close the eyes here and hold very good for the hips, obviously really nice for the shoulders, called Gormukhasan, the mouth of the cow or the face of the cow. And is that because it's that shape where the cow is like, you know, the nose is smaller than the head. It says a lot about architecture as well. Sometimes that structure is found in um, Indian architecture and actually in Egyptian one as well. So old and ancient architecture. And then other sides, so that left foot comes either to the shin, the right shin, or to the outside. But again, if you're pregnant, keep that left foot there and open up to the right side. Back to the front, bringing the left knee on top of the right knee. And again, you can straighten that right leg. And you can wiggle a little bit here to get comfortable. Sometimes it helps to bring the hands to the front, raise the buttocks. And then left arm goes up and drops behind you. And we bind the hands behind us, or we just bring them in front of us here. Or the right hand can go to your left shoulder. So it needs to work for you. It needs to give you that feeling that you're actually stretching effectively. Very good for circulation in the legs as well which if you are pregnant is um, quite important as you're getting on. Eyes closed so you can really tune into your breath. And just hold in comfort. Making sure you are comfortable is super important. I know I stress that a lot, but um, here another little reminder. <laughs> and then release from here and bring the legs to the front. Give them a little shake 
and stretch the legs out but bring the heels to the side flex your feet and raise the arms and drop forwards creating a bit of space here maybe rounding the back a little bit hands can come to the feet but obviously it depends on you and your hamstrings and how that feels hands can come anywhere else as well head dropped shoulders relaxed and we come back up and from here onto all fours again and tuck the toes under and push the hips up into a lovely mountain triangle downward dog whatever you want to call it start just gently um, paddling a little bit here walking the heels into the mat one by one and with that you can bend one leg and drop the opposite hip that sometimes feels nice for the back as well and then roll forwards and drop your knees to the ground walk your hands a little bit further forwards and drop your chest towards the ground so you want to bring the elbows in towards you rather than out to the side so that you're using your tricep rather than your bicep and then back up into Parlatasan, pushing the shoulders to the back, so lengthening the arms and the spine as well. And don't worry too much where your heels are, it doesn't matter. Then inhale, raise your right leg nice and high and on an exhale, flex your foot and drop the heel to the buttocks. That's optional if you prefer just keeping the leg up there, that's fine. On an exhale, step your right foot to the front and bring your left heel to the ground and raise the arms and raise the torso into warrior one we're going to start straightening that right leg and bending it aware of the breath and look up stretch the arms out and then open up to the right side maybe stepping the feet a bit further apart if you want but doesn't have to be super far check that your hands are in line with your shoulders and then look to the front and stay and enjoy that longer hold. Just focusing on a spot in the distance. Or look beyond your right fingertips. And then drop your right arm, raise the left arm, straighten the leg. And raise your right arm, drop the left arm as you come up and over to the back. So into a triangle and then into reverse warrior. Dropping the right arm as you straighten the right leg going up and over to the back as you bend into that leg. And obviously you can go deeper here, but there's no need for that. And then from here, one last reverse worry and then keep the leg bent and just drop your right arm onto the right leg and raise your left arm and send it to the front if you want for a deeper stretch into the side. Now, again, you could look up, you could look to your fingertips, but you want to make sure that your neck is comfortable. So just whatever you need to adjust here try to keep your shoulders on top of each other we can always come lower with the torso but we want that lovely alignment here imagine a wall behind you that you could rest against but you're not <laughs> and then hands to the ground right arm on the inside of the right leg and bring that left knee just underneath your hip and then from here come up so 90 degree angle drop your hands palms together just behind you here and raise the shoulders could look up to the ceiling and then engage your pelvic floor so your mulban so you're squeezing and then letting go squeezing and letting go and if you're not quite sure just squeeze everything in that area it's actually like holding a wee <laughs> so um, that's my tip for today and then release from here hands on the inside of the leg and that right leg goes to the back and we tuck the toes under, push the hips up, back into that lovely mountain for the other side. Raise your left leg and optional, drop that heel towards the buttocks. And on an exhale, step your left foot to the front, right heel to the ground, doesn't have to be far away. And we inhale and raise the arms and straighten up. And then again, we start that movement. We look up to the ceiling and then straighten the left leg and bend it. And as you keep straightening and bending, remember that it's not about how deep you go. It's just about that awareness of the body. We want to cultivate awareness of the body and everything that's going on inside of us so that we're able to make better decisions, wise decisions. And then we slowly hold that left leg bent. Again, doesn't matter how much. Keep the spine straight. You don't want to feel a pinch in your lower back. so. Don't think that this is an arch. 
and then we open up into warrior two. So that right foot steps further back or slides further back in my case. And we try to, so again, we check um, on the hands that they're in line with the shoulders. And we try to also give that left knee a little push out to the side so that it doesn't drop inwards. And to make that easier, we're making sure that the left toes are all facing the front. And then again, we're starting that movement, reverse warrior, and dropping that left arm, sending the right arm to the front as we straighten the left leg. So every time we come forwards and down, we straighten the left leg. Every time we go to the back, we bend that left leg. And what you're doing with the arms doesn't really matter so much. So it's the intention of the movement. You could bring that right hand behind you onto the left waist. You could bring it onto your right waist. You could bring it onto your right leg. Just that general movement of the torso going over to the back and back to the front and down. Again, how much doesn't matter, that's up to you. Slowly from here, drop down into Uttit Parsukunasan, an extended side angle. So that left arm rests on your left knee. Again, you can come further down, but you don't have to. Again, try not to press that knee, the left knee, over to the right side. Keep pressing it out to the left side and make sure your neck is comfortable. And then from here, slowly release the hands to the ground, both inside your left um, knee or left leg and right knee just underneath your right hip or your hips. Raise the arms this time into locking the hands and pushing the palms away from you and maybe gently to the back. And again, engaging your mulband or pelvic floor if you want. as always. Hands to the ground, left knee to the back, back into child's pose for a little break and we just drop the forehead to the ground and take care to let your shoulders drop as well so you want ideally your forearms on the ground for that and then we roll up through the spine coming back onto all fours and we inhale and raise the right arm just stretch out and feel that breath in your right side feel that lovely stretch around the rib cage and make sure that you look wherever is comfortable for the neck so no need to look up drop your elbow behind you so the fingertips are still high you just push that elbow down behind you and back up and then hold at the back dropping the hand behind you if you want and release at the side as was to be expected so that left arm goes up and stays up there for a little while and make sure the neck is comfortable and then from here starting that movement again pressing the elbow down and keeping the hand high. And it goes without saying, but all of this should be comfortable. It shouldn't feel too deep. Drop your hand behind you now. No need to look to the back. You can look anywhere. And the arm goes up and back down. We hold that. And release. From here, from all fours, send your right leg to the back, flex the foot and raise the knee. That should start um, to make you feel quite warm. You're welcome. And take care not to sink into your shoulders. Sometimes that happens when we focus too much on another part of the body. Now, um, right leg up, foot towards the head and right knee towards the right side as you're dropping the head. And same on the other side so that we keep that dorsiflexion in the left foot as we raise it up. So something that should really make your hip feel quite warm. And pointing the toes, foot towards the head as you arch, gently. And knee towards the 
left side. So it doesn't have to go anywhere in particular, but just a little bit further to the left than down. And then hands a little bit further forwards, drop all the way down onto the chest and chin. Sometimes it's hard to get there. You can do this from the front of the body, although if you're pregnant and depending on what stage, um, you're not gonna want to do that. Um, and yeah, elbows not out, but push them towards each other and then push yourself back up and around your back just to get rid of that um, uh, sensation of the compression and back into your mountain, raise your right leg on an inhale and as you exhale, step your right foot to the outside of the right hand and keep your left heel off the ground this time. So you want the toes to face the front so you've got that balance and the arms are up, we're nice and straight we just arrive in the posture and we feel our breath. There's really not much more than we need. Um, just that awareness of the breath. And it shows we're present. We're then aware of all the sensations. And the more we practice that, the more aware we, be we are becoming. deeper and the last few breaths here hands come to the ground and we step back into downward dog or mountain inhaling raising the left leg and optionally flexing the foot and dropping the heel to the buttocks and on an exhale step your left foot to the outside of the left hand right heel this time stays off the ground as before into a high lunge or a variation so your feet are further apart especially if you're pregnant that's quite nice because um i might have said that before in fact i'm pretty sure i've said it before <laughs> your center of gravity will shift and um if obviously the feet are further apart um you're giving yourself more of a base more balance here um so that may be helpful even just as, um, as someone who may struggle with balance, and obviously there's many of us who do, and that's not necessarily a daily thing that can change from day to day, maybe come a little bit lower, but you could challenge yourself by closing the eyes if you feel completely stable here as well. And then hands to the ground, and step to the front this time, feet to the outside of the hands, push your hips down, raise the heels, if you need to, maybe bring the feet further apart, shift your weight a little bit further forwards as you get comfortable. And then if you can, and only if you can, bring the hands to your um, heart center. And this lovely malas and really, really good. Um, but also not without its uh, challenges, so quite a difficult pose, not just because you're trying to straighten the spine, but also because you're actually trying to push the heels to the ground. I wouldn't focus too much on that. Heels can be off the ground, can be held by blocks as well. Um, but from here, so it's, it wasn't too long. <laughs> I wasn't too hard on you, was I? Come down onto your back and um, raise your legs towards the ceiling. You can raise the arms as well and just give yourself a little bit of movement into your fingers and your toes and your wrists and ankles and then just relax the arms down doesn't matter where they are and we'll come into a twist we might intertwine the legs in the way that I'm doing but if that's not for you and if you want your hands elsewhere that's completely fine just guide that right knee in some way over to the left side some people prefer straightening the legs um, or maybe just straightening the left leg while that right knee comes closer towards your um, torso so no right or wrong just a feeling in the body and that feeling should be one of comfort and relaxation that allows that awareness. Don't overload your body so much that the awareness goes out the window. And that could mean, you know, the, the intensity of a stretch. It doesn't have to be fast movements that overload the body. It can be just a very deep stretch that lets our breath change. And often without us noticing. Slowly come up and make sure that if the hips were going to the side a little bit that they're back in the center. Hug the knees in, do something with your feet if you want to and knees far apart and back together or not too far apart but just something that feels comfortable. And then going to the other side in your own time, no rush. And 
often it's nice to turn the head to the um, opposite side um, from the knees, but you know, not for everyone. I have a student who never does that because it hurts her neck. So we're all different. Do something that is good for you, especially as you're holding for so long, you want to be resting in comfort and just allow yourself to feel everything that's going on in the body. You could even do a little body scan, with the eyes closed, just noticing if there's any parts of the body that feel tense or tight and letting go of that tension, maybe by helping out with the breath. So if you were guiding the breath into that area and then slowly come up and rock up to seated and you may, so we are going to play this by ear, hands behind you and you may raise your toes off the ground. You could have them on the ground, you could also straighten the legs, you could raise the arms to the front, not necessarily if you're pregnant, but if you're a beginner and you want to do a little bit more, then that's an option. But it's actually fine to hold here and especially when we're holding for a long time. Drop the feet and shake off the legs and then bring both um, feet underneath you so that you're sitting on the heels if that's not comfortable legs to the front or whatever else works and then bring your hands onto the chest and stomach take a breath in and sigh out and then we'll start the humming bee or Brahmri Pranayam really really good for creating our own positive neurotransmitters and painkillers wonderful thing to do and it feels really nice one little tip before we start so essentially you just breathe in and hum out and you can really go for it if you want to think um, that you're making the sound of a bee it helps to think of a m sound and make it quite sort of round everything in your mouth that includes the tongue so bring the tongue to the roof of your mouth and to the back of the palate as you hum Whenever you need a break from humming, if it gets too much, then just give yourself a break. And then from there we'll come into alternate nostril breathing, Nari Shodhan, the cleansing of the energy channels, the Naris. And um, we start by, so I'm not mirroring here if you're looking, bringing the thumb, uh, right thumb to the right nostril, breathing in through the right nostril. And then using maybe the right forefinger or if you want to keep the hand curled in the right um, uh, ring finger to close off the left nostril so we do that inhaling through the um, left nostril while closing the right nostril with the thumb exhaling through the right nostril closing the left nostril with one of our fingers and we'll keep going like that so inhaling through the right out through the left and then in through the left and out through the right and I want you to focus not too much on a ratio or anything like that, but just something that feels comfortable and natural to your body. Breathing with awareness, guiding the breath, that's all fine. But keep it natural, keep it comfortable. Sometimes we forget that with this um, breathing exercise. And it can become something else where you're, you know, um, going further and further and even holding the breath Obviously not um, if you're pregnant, but that's this is the beginning. Just this in through one, out through the other. You may count your breaths just out of interest, but don't think too much about it. Don't think you're doing anything wrong. Slowly drop your hand, move into your neck, and to the end of the class soon. So we'll come onto the right side of the body, or if you're pregnant, onto the left side. And actually, if you're not pregnant and you prefer coming onto um, your back and into Shavasana, that's fine as well. But try to just be aware of your breath and which nostril may be the more dominant one where you feel more air or energy and just observe your breath no guidance necessary just observing that coming and going of the breath
in and out through the nose, not the mouth. Noticing the rise and fall of the stomach. Movement around the chest. And your rib cage. Your back. Notice your heartbeat. And then slowly, maybe with the eyes still closed, come up to seated, crossing the legs or doing anything else that feels nicer for you. Dropping the head, maybe gently shaking the head and rounding the shoulders. Anything you need to wake yourself up, any last movements that will feel nice. And then we gently twist, opening up the straight torso to the left side and then opening up to the right side. It's really gentle, not deep. Bring the hands onto opposite knees and drop the head round the back, arms to the front and up. And then you could join me in three sighs. We're reaching the arms up high and exhale, drop your arms or just sigh out. Inhale, raise the arms. Exhale, sigh out, drop the arms. And one more time, breathe in, raise the arms. Sigh out as you drop the arms. And then rub your hands together. Creating some warmth and place the palms over your face. Keep them there. And we're going to do Bramri Pranayam or the humming bee. Breathing in and humming out. Just inhaling through the nose, nice and gently. And humming out. You could again bring the tip of the tongue to the roof of your mouth. Imagine that sound of the bee. Just a little bit longer and no pressure on your diaphragm or any other part of the body. And then maybe letting yourself experience how that feels taking a break in between. You can also bring your thumbs onto your ears and press down so that you really just hear what's going on inside of you. And then we're almost done, just a few more rounds of Pramri Pranayam. Slowly let the sound come to an end. Open the eyes. And thank you so much for joining. Bring the hands to the heart center.